Hey, hey, y'all. I'm going to teach you how to do a inequality with fractions. And I don't feel like um, doing this voice for the whole video. So let me just switch back to this thing. Um, so here we have, um, <clears throat> this is less than or equal to one. If this was an equal sign, you would just multiply both sides by three X minus two. The problem is we don't know if that's positive or negative. So let's make it um, positive. So we don't have to worry about switching signs. So one way to do that is to actually square this. So three X minus two squared has to be a positive number. And just work this out a bit. So one of these is gonna go away and leaving us with one here. And this other side, we're going to FOIL it out using shortcut of binomial theorem. So I'm gonna assume everybody's familiar with FOILing and this shortcut here to square this, square the last and multiply the two in three X and negative two and double it. Foiling this side, six X squared minus three X minus four X is negative seven X. That's our outers and inners. All right, now we wanna get over everything over to one side. And I like keeping the squares positive, so I'm going to subtract the 6x here. So my goal is to get a zero on this side. I want to add the 7x, subtract the 2. And now we got to factor this guy. So we can. Multiply three and two together to get six. That's first times last. And then we want to get negative five. So that's not six and one, that's two and three, negative two and negative three. And we could do this. We could write this out as negative three X minus two X. This is factored by grouping. So it's just the way this works is you rewrite negative five X as something that's going to help us like this. We split down the middle and take out GCFs. Over here, I'm going to take out a negative two. Of course, taking out that negative helps these two match. So this become three X minus two and X minus one. Those are the factors. I wrote them separately like this so we could set them equal to zero and solve. We get two answers here. We get x is 2 thirds and x is 1. These are not solutions. They are what we call critical points. These help us to figure out what is actually going on here. Points. So the traditional way this is taught is to uh, think about things that are less than, between, or more than the critical points. So I'm going to briefly show what that looks like. So you would set up a table, something like this, and pick a number that is less than two thirds. That is, we could put zero. Now I'm gonna plug zero mentally into this and I'm gonna get two, two is positive. Now, once you get familiar with this, you'll note that the middle one should probably be negative, but let's see how this is gonna work out. I need to pick a number between um, two thirds and one that's kind of a pain. Um, so I'm going to pick, uh, let's see, five, five, six. So there's a reason I'm picking that number. Um, actually, maybe three fourths work out too. I was trying to pick something out of cancel nicely, but nothing does with um, all these numbers here. This is the sort of stuff you use calculators to help you out, but um, the idea here is I want to get practice without one because with a calculator you could actually graph all this and find the answer pretty easily. I forgot to square this guy. Not bad. It's like sixteen. And it's two. Okay, so two. I'm gonna write as uh. Oh, you have to get the sixteenths anyway. 
So 32 over 16. Let me just change this middle guy to 16. So I'm going to multiply everything by, by 4. Let's look at the numbers we got. So we're going to be adding 32 and 27. That's 59 minus 60. That whole thing is, is negative. Okay, so I'm not going to worry about what the answer is necessarily. Well, it should be, should be 59. Oh, sorry about it. The negative one sixteenth, something like that. Uh, so this is a negative, and then something bigger than one, like a plug in two. I'm just going to do a quick mental thing here. All right, so this is going to be twelve minus ten. That's two plus two. This is four. So this is positive. So knowing this, you could actually write out your answer, and then I'm going to show a quick way of doing this. So we want to know where this is. Sorry, I had to think there. Um, so we have these two regions where it's positive, um, which is what we want. So this statement here has a less than sign, but switch it around, it's greater than equal to. So we have two regions like this and union up and outs. So we're going from negative infinity all the way to the first critical point, two thirds. In between it is negative, and then we have going from one to positive infinity. Now we're going to see how to do it without all this time consuming work right here. And that's by making use of what this actually looks like. So this is a parabola. You imagine it as y equal to all that. And a, the a value number in front, the three is positive. So we say a is greater than zero. So this is a right side up U, just a regular U. So I'm going to make a rough graph of what this looks like and how we can figure out our final answer. So I'm going to consider the critical points here. I'm going to label this one and one third and two thirds here. So these are zeros. And we know it's supposed to be right side up parabola. So it's going like this, a U, U shape. And continuing up this way and this way. So you can see where it's positive, it's positive in two places, and that's on either side of the critical points. And so you can write this answer right away. And that's it.